Okay guys, what's up? And today I'm going to be showing you how to install StarMaid. So today I'm just going to run through this really quickly. Um, what you want to do is head over to Google and um, what you're going to do is type in StarMaid. So StarMaid, enter, and there it is, StarMaid.org. Okay, I've already got it loaded up. Here it is, StarMaid.org. So just open this out. You're going to want to get over to the download section and then if you're Windows, Mac, Linux, pick the one you want, say accept the terms and say download. Um, once you've got that downloaded, uh, copy it into a folder. I've got a folder here called StarMate Tutorials. Um, I've got my launcher in there, so I'm gonna double click. And then up comes Launcher 14. It might be a higher version than that, and you can check for the newest launcher just here. You don't, you don't need to worry about the server port or the mirror settings at the moment. Um, the help section is links to the websites, okay? So you've got some good help here. You can get onto the forums straight from there, the Reddit, the news. Um, what you're gonna wanna look at first really is the memory settings. You wanna match this to your computer. So I've got eight gigabytes of memory on this desktop. So I'm using half of my computer's available memory and it's got to divide by eight. So if you just take 1024 and times it by the number of gigabytes you want to give it to the game, that'll give you a nice number. The initial memory, I never put that over 1024. And although I used to have early generation at 512, I was recommended to use 256 recently, and that seems to be working just great for me. Um, it was worth noting though, this is my multiplayer only setting, or, you know, because when you run single player, you're actually running a dedicated server on your system. So the dedicated server tab has less max memory than my client. And the reason for that is because I don't want to take up another 4,000 because then Windows won't have anything to run. You need to leave at least 2,000 to 4,000, really, uh, depending on how many other applications you've got running in the background. Um, I do a lot of streaming and recording, and that's sometimes I've even got like Premiere open as well, so that seems to work out just fine for me. Um, so two, two, and one for my dedicated server. Um, I probably could put that down actually to, to 256. But anyway, that's the memory settings covered. Uh, like I say, if you've got like 16, then you could go up to eight or 10, no problem. Um, so just sort of play around with it really. Start small and scale it up and you should be fine. The main thing which we need to pay attention to, of course, you can refresh the news just there. We've got refresh which refreshes the actual uh, update start system. Start dedicated server, which will just start a dedicated server up now. I'll just show you that. So if you do that, up will pop. Let's just get rid of this for now. Up will come the, the, the dedicated server. If you wanted to then run it again, now I'll log in. If I just click start game quickly, we're not actually gonna boot it up, but I'm just gonna show you this. As you can see here, if I now click and lo log on to a local host, which will not be under there, I need to just literally type, there it is, local host, colon 4242. What that will do is it will log me into my StarMaid server. And if I was to then go to Google and just type IP, uh, you'll need to forward that port with your router. But there'll be another tutorial on that. So on we go. We need to actually get the server downloaded first. So let's just... Right, there we go. At the moment, it's looking at my previous installation. That's how I can show you all that stuff, guys. So we've just downloaded our StarMade starter. We're gonna open it up. And then inside, we're gonna go Options, Installation, Settings. Now, I'm actually gonna take this path. If you just click on the top of the window there, you can copy, Control-C, or right-click, Copy, yeah? And go across to your path. And it should already be set, but I like to set it, so there you go. Tutorials, and now I'm gonna type slash 0175. I, I just use the version number, but you could type star made at this point. In fact, we'll do that. Star made, and it's on release, so okay. Don't worry about an error, that probably won't be there when you're doing this, guys, but uh, at the moment, just click okay, it doesn't matter. Right, so then we click update and install. So it's gonna download each file individually the first time. So the first time install does take a little bit longer than usual, but after that point, it will actually scan your system and only download the files that it needs. So 
The first time install takes a little bit longer than usual, but after then it's usually a few megs, if that, um, unless there's like major texture pack changes. So, you know, um, the, the download is usually a lot faster than this. So I'm just gonna speed it up and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so what we've got now is we've got this thing installed. So if I just go and check this out, where are we? We got the da, 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 it's done. So now if I go into my star made folder, as you can see, we've got the uh, most of the files are here. The first generation, so if you run the game once, it's actually going to fill in a whole load more files, as you can see, look there. So I'm just going to quickly put my name in. Now, a lot of servers use something called the uplink, okay, and this checks your authentication is using a username and password that you use on the official forums, okay? So, basically, um, if if you wanted to make sure that like a lot of servers use this, so that's what it means when you don't uplink, or if you can't uplink, um, you need to do that and save it so that when you log in, the server knows you are you. As there is a protected name system, so if you want to use an alt, you can say Tamino Sam as clone, okay, and without the stupid tilde. And then if I log in with this, you usually get a default of 10 protected names. So just to run through some of these settings here, okay. Um, obviously, we've got the tutorial, the AI, uh, that's good for single player because you can turn that up to mean and then the pirates are a bit cleverer, um, more aggressive. You've got your resolution settings. I usually go with 1280 by 720 windowed. Um, I mean, these are the settings I use, but it depends on your card and the specs of your PC. I tend to leave shadows off, but on ultra actually looks amazing. Um, we're going to have on 128 for the lighting quality. Now, lighting quality, turning it down will make everything load faster, but turning it up will make the lighting much, much smoother. So it takes longer to load, so it's, it's up to you really, and again, it's your hardware, what you can deal with. I find 128 is a nice balance for me. If you have an Oculus Rift, hit this button, because um, it is an Oculus supported game. Um, if we go to procedural on, this is the procedural background. I turn mine to 4096, because I find that it doesn't pixelate the background, it looks nice. I go with the default texture pack at oh, 256. Sound is on. There are some more options here. So if we go up to settings and go show advanced, you can actually see we've got anti-aliasing, which I, cor I currently turn that off, and that's because I do a lot of screenshots. Um, uh, bl bloom, I usually have on. On, I love bloom. Um, the bump mapping is on. The VBO bulk mode. Now, this is another thing about the game. It, it really speeds up the game. But I, I tend to have mine at four, and you can actually go down to one, and you can go up to 256. More doesn't mean better. You have to tune it to your hardware setup, like your graphics card, okay? Um, various frame rate limiting, okay? So you can set that there. There's your max segments. Max segments is a bit like draw distance, but it's a little bit, you know, it, it's much, much larger than just draw distance. Because obviously in space, there is less stuff around you so draw distance doesn't really work as well uh, high-res background is a fallback image for when you have the procedural background off so it looks a bit like you know spacey photos um, enable shield hit graphics whenever you your shield gets hit there's like a little graphic that'll come around there you, you can actually uh, turn that off if you don't want the shields to get be buzzing all the time there's, 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 there's reasons why you might want that. So there's a lot of different options down here, like inverting the mouse, inverting the buttons on the mouse, atmosphere shaders, and a few 2D texture options, which I never ever touch. Um, I think that's mostly fallback for older hardware, but I, I never use it. So uh, we're just gonna do a login quick with this guy. Uh, God knows where I'm logging into. I didn't even look. It's probably just going to go. Uh, why are you doing? Looks like I'm logging into. Um. Suspense. Don't worry when it hangs at 93 or 99 percent. It's probably just loading the spawn area for where you're about to load in and sometimes ships are 
pretty mental. So, 100%. It's pretty... Ah, oh, there we go. We're in. So, I think this is actually just my single player. Yep, single player. So, obviously, you'd be familiar with planets and the sun and there's the background and stuff. Now, I'm not going to go into the actual in-game tutorial just yet. I'm going to focus on the launcher. So, I'm just going to head back out to so escape and quit. And as you can see now, this folder here, we have a hell of a lot more data. So I'm going to run through what all this actually is real quick. Um, and like I say, because this was where we started. We had our launcher. We created the star made folder using the launcher settings, and then it put in the base. Once we first run, all of this other stuff is generated. Most of it you'll never need to touch. However, you might want to change the server message if you want to run a server off this installation. You might want to change the settings.cfg. Just to quickly show you what they look like. Settings.cfg look a bit like this. And they're mostly for things like draw exhaust plumes, true or false. It's all kinds of stuff which you probably would never have to change and you certainly wouldn't want to change uh, on the server. Well, I wouldn't change it on the server. Most of the stuff that you want to actually change, which people do change, is in the server.cfg. Server.cfg contains which world you're going to be using, okay? Because there's a world manager now. Um, which will pre-package this entire deal, um, or rather the, the the database, sorry. Sector size, just here, so you might want to change your sector size to like 8,000 or 800,000 million, I don't know, whatever you, whatever you want to do to break your computer. So you can set them up to be whatever you want. 80,000 is pretty big for a single sector, I'd say. Um, your starting credits, you'll probably want to buff that up even though there's commands for it. Just don't go over 2.5 billion because the, the game doesn't like it. Um, and then Universe Day, you can change the amount of time it takes for the sun to go around one of your rotating planets, for example. Thrust speed limit, you really just want to read down all of these because, you know, you can change that to 275. Most of the weapons in the game will actually scale with the speed set here, so your missiles will go faster relative to that, etc. Okay, Max clients, you might only want to have two people on your little build server, so there's a good way to stop that. Um, obviously, the whitelist, turn on the whitelist, that's in here. Authentication, that's in here. You can see that one just there. You've got to change certain things to true from false or false to true. You've got your AI destruction count. So here's the loot that comes buffed in this game. It's already at 0.9. On our server, we changed it to 0.1. Um, there's your whitelist. So you change that to true. And then you can determine who actually gets on and on your server. You can change the spawn sector location here. So you can change the spawn sector. Say it gets overpopulated. You think it's going to be a bit too much trouble to clean it out move it. The rotating spawns are inside the same sector or that you define here. So I believe it's something to do with there's an area in which players will spawn. So they spawn around something. Uh, modified blueprint tolerance, I usually turn that to 0.3 because sometimes there's a discrepancy between the cost of blocks uploaded on a blueprint. Turning dimension scale, we actually tend to buff that. So we did a 0.9, a 0.8, because it allows larger ships to turn quicker, which just looked good on film. Um, but, you know, you could have it slower. Uh, the way it works is, in fact, anything over 150 on any dimension gets turns at the same speed. Anything smaller than 150 gets a buff relative to how much smaller it is, with a core obviously being the smallest you can get. Um, AI weapon accuracy, we actually turn that up to a thousand with the new weapon system. So that tends to work out quite nicely. Um, we use a setting of 8,000 and we're changing it to four for the new universe uh, topography, which is coming soon. Uh, this tutorial obviously filmed before, just before the new map and universe arrived. Um, let me just see now, what else have we got here? All kinds of stuff. Here you go, missile defense, friendly fire. So can you shoot down your own missiles? <laughs> so you can change that. 
dynamic uh, recipe lists. Oh yeah, also the server list name. So you can put in the name and description of your server and then the host name which you announce and true. And that will put you on the server list which we're going to take a look at now. So, no. If I just quickly open the launcher again and then go back in here. If I take a look at the next page there's a server list so if you select the radio button for multiplayer and then say server list you can pick from any of the servers which are advertised on here uh, there's currently 43 servers seven of them are incompatible which means that some are probably running dev because it has the new universe let's check yep 1794 battle mode battle mode star drift yeah, it's clever. And then a few people are actually a version behind. Like Herpy Flurpy. <laughs> so I'm going to close that up for now. The world manager I didn't really explain. Basically, you click on that and you can actually create new worlds and switch between them, import and export them and share them. So you could set up some kind of adventure world and script it and have displays everywhere that read and I don't know. You get it, me. Mini games. So that's one thing that's useful. We can distribute those. Uh, it's going to be something which is going to be more prevalent soon. Anyway, at the moment, there aren't many of them about. Under modding, you've got create custom skin. Create custom skin enables you to take four images and then put them together and use them as a skin. You can also load a skin with the last one. Now, I actually have like a bunch of these things. So basically, I could just pick one of mine. Um, so if you pick that one, for example, this skin here, um, it's actually just a zip file. If you open it with WinRAR, it's got the four images that you want to edit with Photoshop. Two of them are a light emissive map, and then one of them is uh, the uh, skin, you know, the actual image which goes around the character. So you can just edit them in Photoshop and make whatever skin you want, put them together using the launcher, and then you can share them as SM skin files. There's also a custom block editor which allows creation of uh, any new custom block. And there's a custom texture sheet for servers allowing 256 additional blocks. So you've got the price tables, you've got the recipes, and then we've got the blocks which have the actual information for everything all on GUI form. You can just do it all in pure XML if you're a coder. So you don't need to touch this. But it is quite nice to learn what options you have to play with, you know, because you can just look and see, oh okay, so we've got these things. Resource injection flora. Anyway. So there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm not going to go into that. You know, that's a whole other tutorial. But basically, there is a in-game supported custom block creation tool, which means you can pretty much mod the game now. There are mods already in the in the uh, forums as well. Um, I could just quickly show you right here uh, on the community section. Um, if you get your account, you've got access to all kinds of things. Uh, you can go into community content and check out all the latest chips, space stations, texture packs, skins, mods, and logic, which has been added in. Oh, Logic's a new category. I didn't know that had been true. It's not really a ship, is it? It's just just logic. <laughs> There's already 14 of them. Interesting. I would have thought they would have a template section. Anyway, so from this point that would be the tutorial I'm just trying to think if there's anything else which we've forgotten ah of course blueprints the all important blueprints if I look up your blueprints folder this is all the blueprints that are currently in the game so if I wanted to get some of my blueprints from a last installation for example I could go into this one and I could pick my latest world to refit copy paste now if you were given an SM skin file, for example, like this one, or an SM cement, sorry, a cement file, okay, that's not going to work if you put it in that directory. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to do that. I'm just going to move this one again, 
and put it into the tutorials folder because it really doesn't matter where it is. We start the launcher up, click start game and there is a catalog manager. This is probably the most reliable way of transferring your blueprints. If you click on here um, you can just move down and as you can see the world eater refit is there so I'm going to do an export first it can show you that. It says where it went but I'm going to go there in a second. Click import and now I'm going to show you this other one. So I'm going to go up one. So it always starts where it is. So if you have your blue, if you have your blueprints in the folder above, you just go up. There's there's your blueprint. Import. And as you can see, it's brought in my Mobius chair. Only a little thing. So now we're going to exit this. That's in there. I don't have to. I don't even have to check. It's definitely there. So there it is. Mobius is in. If we now w want to, s to share that world eater and go into the newly created exported folder and as you can see there's the world eater refit SMN uh, cement file. So you can post this up onto the StarMade doc. It's really easy. All you have to do is go to the content section, add content, 